Hi everyone and welcome. In this recording, I'm going to be speaking about this upcoming new moon taking place on the 4th of November in the sign of Scorpio. If you have been listening to my previous horoscopes, I was talking about that the very beginning of the autumn 2021 is going to be a massive crescendo buildup of energy, especially as the big power players go out of retrograde and start going direct, so that will dynamize things, that will make the energies from every single perspective, of course both individually and collectively, move forward, so it will be like a big push from the back. And while that naturally means a lot of action taking place both in the world and in our lives as well, that's positive. But you know, that also means that the hardship and the storm out there on a 3D level is getting stronger and stronger. And this Scorpionic full moon is definitely going to be one of those moments when it gets really, really intense on a 3D level. Of course, the big picture and the ultimate end goal of this Scorpionic highly concentrated scorpionic energy is to catalyze is to basically encourage our transformation our regeneration our healing our rebirth but that process you know i'm not going to lie it is very painful so one way or another and i don't want to be the doom and gloom kind of astrologer But still, this is going to be painful. This is not easy energy. It does the job. It is very intense. It is, you know, like a a flail, like a whip, motivating us the hard way to do the work, get immersed into it, not shy away, get serious, very, very serious with everything that we need to transform in our lives. But, you know, the best motivational force out there is pain, after all. And this can be painful from a lot of different perspectives. This can be, for example, not easy to look at, because certain big truths and secrets and things that were more like expressively hidden from our side, you know, skeletons in the closet kind of energy, and of course, globally speaking, Well, it's going to become that very obvious to all of us. For some of us, it's going to be obvious in a very rational, direct manner. For other people, more like instinctually, as if they will clearly know that something is very, very wrong out there in the world. This is also the energy where we're going to see exactly why further into the horoscope, where corruption and the... Foul play is gonna be that much more obvious, and of course, in basically everything politicians, world leaders, big corporation, anything that basically is under a shroud of mystery, and that shroud of mystery is basically the wool over our eyes, so it's very, very intentional. This is not like the most positive mysteries in life. This is more like the kind of mystery that we really don't want to look at. And then there is, strictly individually, whenever we have a very strong and intense and also chaotic energy in Scorpio, well, that means that our wounds, every you know, Scorpio, let's just take the symbolism of Scorpio. It is a fixed water sign. It is the home of Pluto and also Mars. So we know that it's about the shadow, it's about the filth, it is it's basically the worst expression as polluted water. And when there is a lot of toxin in the water, well, it's ultimately not compatible with life, is it? It's suffocating, it is choking, it is a reminder of mortality, basically, of the end, of death. This is where... It is definitely going to be a reflection of the point of no return when us or anything basically in our mortal lives, in our 
material sphere, when something undergoes a profound transformation, well, it will never ever be the same again. And in this sense, it is actually a point of no return, because there is no going back anymore. Perhaps some transformations are so profound that even the original state is not even a memory. Even the memory itself is erased. There is a Latin saying, memento mori, and I do believe that this scorpionic energy is so very symbolic of that. All of us, in at least one area of life, one way or another, are definitely going to be reminded of certain losses that we had, and also, and perhaps this is the saving grace, how those losses transformed us, how those losses changed us, how they caused a certain kind of symbolic, or for some people not even that symbolic, mutation in our lives. Because when I say mutation... Well, it is the kind of transformation where perhaps we don't want to undergo it, but we have to adapt, we have to survive, we have to, we or better said, we had to once accept a very painful reality where we felt totally powerless to go against it. So we had no choice but to allow the mutation to transform us for the sake of survival, for the sake of continuity, for the sake to perhaps preserve the very essence of who we were, giving up perhaps its most beautiful, perhaps its most elevated, innocent expression, yet still, the act of compromise, the act of wanting to survive and allowing the mutation to take place was also an act of courage, was also an act of alchemy, was it not? Like, let me just give you a very, perhaps morbid example. Yet, morbid is very scorpionic, so it will definitely fit the theme. Well, let's just take, for example, that someone suffered an accident, a horrible accident, and they lost their physical integrity. Maybe they ended up in the wheelchair. And... That was done. That can never ever be transformed back to its original state. So this is the process of mutation. What does that person do with their lives? They can either embrace the role of the victim, but some people can actually elevate this to a certain kind of strength, to a certain kind of act of bravery, which otherwise would not be possible without the accident and without the the horrible loss, a loss that we can never ever erase, never truly heal, never go back to the original state. For example, when someone chooses to become like a para-Olympic and they become a champion. So basically, it didn't just turn them into a survivor, but it turned them into such a positive example that they can actually, what they've done with their wounds, it inspires even those people who never had that same loss. That is where they embody basically the most elevated expression of Scorpio, the Phoenix. But of course, all of what I said here is just symbolic. It is just the power of the example. Now, perhaps let's take a look at what this Scorpio new moon may mean for us both collectively and personally. Now, one of the most highlighted aspects of this energy takes us back to the 12th of January 2020 when we had that very powerful and world-changing in a very, very literal sense conjunction of Saturn and Pluto in the sign of Capricorn. Now, me and every single astrologer on the planet talked volumes about that energy back when it happened, and of course, 
It was predicted and awaited long before. So simply said that always represents a massive world change, especially that it took place in Capricorn. And whenever Saturn and Pluto meet in the sky, well, it's crisis. It is something extremely unpleasant which pushes the world, in a literal sense, out of the, their comfort zone, and it produces, it wants change, profound change. We kind of all know how it played out in 2020, and that process is still ongoing, and because it is Scorpio, which is the home sign of Pluto, and this, for new moon, sorry, speaks in attention with Saturn, it is basically a big reminder of this energy. So first of all, we have to ask ourselves, how has the Saturn and Pluto conjunction, all the events basically that are correlated with it, the, for some people the global events, for other people the personal events, how did that change our lives? But when I say change, that change is the point of no return. So we can never, ever, ever go back to the old normality. How has that change affected us? Of course, we have to look at the positive sides because we gained a lot of things, regardless of how painful it was. And of course, we have to look at the not so favorable side. What did we lose? What did we have to sacrifice? What did the pain because the pain is a massive alchemical element here, if you know what I'm saying. How has the pain transformed us? And most importantly, it's all about the truth. What did we discover about ourselves, our psyche, our identity, our unconscious, regardless of what area of life this took place in? What have we discovered a core truth about ourselves? And of course, how did this surprise us? How did this shock us? And ultimately, how is this contributing to our future? Because it's not just the present that has changed for us, it is also the future. That is the big prize if you get what I'm saying. All of us have our personal Saturn, especially in the sign of Capricorn, how the best way to take that energy is our own set of laws, personal laws, the personal constitution of our lives, our rules and regulations for ourselves, for our modus vivendi, our way of living, for our morality, for the person who it is that we are. And when I say we are, how, who we are willingly out of our own choice, now, it is exactly that person who we were back in 2020 of our own choice that this energy deconstructed. It crushed us, really. You know, the best symbol for this is the tower in tarot. The lightning bolt came down and we were never the same again. So basically, what did that energy do for us personally? How did it serve us and how did we serve it? Of course, there was a moment, perhaps, for other people, a longer time, when we fought against it. When we said, well, you can't do this to me. And when I say you, maybe it was the world change, the divine, the karmic forces, other people, the government. Whoever we felt that challenged us the most, we said, well, don't do this to me. I'm not ready for this extent of change. And... It didn't matter, it still transformed us. That was a moment in all of our lives when we couldn't resist the flow. We were swept away. And why is this so very important to ask ourselves this question? Well, on one hand, because we this energy promotes the truth, the painful kind of, the core truth. And if we ask ourselves that question, we help these energies become less painful because we will know the big theme of what is transforming in our lives. And when I say transforming, don't just understand this full moon and that's it. What is transforming in this period? And that means years until 2024. Perhaps it is going to be either 2024 when this transformation is complete 
or maybe 2026. And why? We'll find out very soon. And on the other hand, the other important reason why we have to ask ourselves these questions, because the ruling planet of Scorpio's Pluto, that means psychoanalysis. Let's just be our own counselors at this time and be one, one step ahead of these energies. Let's look at the motivational force, the big picture, the prize. Let's look at actually the carrot on the stick to motivate ourselves with where, where we're truly going, the end line. We all know what is being challenged and deconstructed, but it is only the construction, what we're building simultaneously, that can motivate us to go through the pain. Because one way or another, this is not going to be a pretty picture. And perhaps that is the biggest irony of this energy, because regardless of how we look at it, a Scorpio new moon also means... Some kind of reward, some kind of jackpot, getting exactly what we want, what we seek, what we desire. But, you know, the sacrifice that we had to do, that we had to basically offer the process, our own unique personal ways, that sacrifice was already so very impactful and big that the prize getting what we want, perhaps it's not going to be sweet after all. Now, let me just give you my personal example, even though I hate speaking about myself. The biggest desire that I wished around, let's say, the Saturn and Pluto conjunction was freedom. Well, I got that freedom by losing absolutely every material possession that I could possibly have and my dignity and my self-worth Basically everything, you know, that meant rock bottom. But I got freedom because there was no attachment there any longer. And, you know, because I'm a very Plutonian kind of person, I have very strong Pluto in my chart. I lost all of that. The chains, basically. Because I lost the money and house and whatever. But those are uh, chains, sorry, attachments. But I lost them in such a way that I cannot recover them. I cannot rebuild them. They're lost forever. But at the end of the day, that means freedom, right? But when I look back at it, do I cry or do I laugh or both at the same time? So I have to ask myself the question, am I truly grateful for that freedom? Am I truly grateful for having my wish fulfilled on a silver tray? And basically, am I truly grateful for the biggest truth that I personally, and this this cannot be generalized, it's only just me and my subjective perception, that the divine is actually insane. In the sense that what our human minds cannot even go near of comprehending, but when you still get a mouthful of that taste, it is insanity to you. So, where I'm going with this is, with this Scorpionic new moon, new moon, new beginning, creation, seeds of intention, manifestation, especially Scorpio, the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio is at home, and also the sun, and also the moon. So, yes, we are definitely, one way or another, getting exactly what we want, what we need, what we desired, but also the bitter sweetness of that. Let me give you an even more twisted and morbid example of exactly what these energies mean. You know, when there is a child and the parents tell the child, I'm going to buy you this, let's say, toy, something that the child desires, if you perform really, really well at school, and if you make me proud, you know, like, truly do the work. And then, slowly but surely, this child starts working and coming home with really, really good grades, and of course, the moment comes 
when it's time for reward, when it's time for, let's say, Christmas, birthday, etc. And the parent asks the child, well, okay, you were truly amazing. You did the work. You, you performed so well beyond my wildest expectations. Now let's go to the toy store or wherever and you choose exactly what you want. It's yours. You earned it. Let's go. And the child says, I don't want it anymore. Or even better, the child says, buy me this, but I'm giving it to the children's home. And there is that shock. It is elation. It is a transformation, a maturization beyond anything that anyone would have expected. But that is built on pain. The pain of the child having to give up its childlike innocence because it had to work. It had to outperform other children. It had to work, perhaps, who knows what that child sacrificed from within himself to actually bring the result, the high-end grades, to make the parent proud. And how bittersweet is that moment when you get your prize, but it's not the beautiful, innocent, rose-tinted glass that you had in mind or you had in your soul when you dreamed it up, when you realized that you wanted it. And this is exactly the imprint, the stamp of this Scorpio new moon. This is when, you know, alchemy, the journey to get where you want to get changes you and the final destination will not matter even the slightest when you actually get there. And imagine this energy playing out on the world stage. Now, the way I imagine this energy manifesting on the world stage, Scorpio, Scorpio has also science attached to it, research, detective, discovery, experimentation in a literal sense, scientific sense, medical sense, So that to me says there is definitely going to be some kind of massive progress like a cure for the COVID or something really big. But when I say big, it's almost mind-blowingly big. That will definitely make a huge difference. Maybe not necessarily on the 4th of November because a full moon can manifest during six months after. But anyway, it's going to have a massive difference. But... You know, what did we as a collective, as a species, let's say, suffer to get to that achievement, to get to that discovery? Or yet another expression of this energy. Everyone wants the truth. What happened? What happened as in how did all of this huge chaos start? Where did it come from? What happened economically? What happened financially? What happened politically, what happened with big corporations, etc. So many questions. And are we truly ready for the answer? (laughs) And why am I highlighting this? Because this full moon, astrologically speaking, holds an exact to the degree opposition with Uranus in the sign of Taurus. Uranus is the unapologetic, raw, brutal, and heartless even truth the kind of truth that is just there you cannot ignore it you cannot even philosophize you know it's the fact it's there you all you can do is look at it and just take it in uranus is also science uranus is also technology uranus is also the future and it descends like a lightning bolt it shocks us it unsettles us It reminds us of all the things that perhaps we might not want to consider. So regardless of how collectively this new moon plays out, well, it's going to be very, very revelatory, but in such a sense where it can be a little bit of salt in the wound as well. Like, let me just give you another very morbid example, and I'm so sorry to use this, but this is the scorpionic theme. You know, a wife asks a detective, go find out what my husband is doing. And the detective comes back and it's not just the answer that the wife receives as in, yes, your husband is cheating on you, but a video. 
the detail, the shock, the horror, the pain. When you ask for something, as in when you ask a question and you truly want to get the truth, you get it. Are you ready for it? Can you truly process it if it comes in a very raw and brutal way? And naturally, without a shadow of doubt, all of us are gonna have a moment, collectively again, when we will find out exactly what our politicians are up to and who they truly are and what games and plans and stuff like that they have in their agendas. And... This uh, new moon speaks in harmony, a trine with Neptune. So if we mix Neptune in the picture, well, I don't even really know how to put this in any other way. But it is going to become very obvious to us that all of us are willingly and most importantly unwillingly players in a big scenario. One that is perhaps a little bit more twisted than we want to admit to ourselves. As in, aren't all of us just puppets? Aren't all of us manipulated? Aren't all of us mass hypnotized in a certain sense? And if you truly look at everything, the big picture, without conspiracy, without fantasy, without sci-fi, without the spiritual dress-up, just... You know, use your common sense. Of course, we're being manipulated. Of course, we are puppets. Of course, so many of us have been turned into flesh and blood robots who don't think for themselves anymore. Just go out on the street and look at people that the mo their mobile phones are their world. That is their reality. They can't even look at other people on the street and the eye because their mobile phones consume them in a literal sense. There it is. That's all you need to look at to see where things went. And this Scorpionic new moon has also a little bit of prophetic quality to it. Uranus, the planet of prophecy. You will also get a glimpse and you not in a magical way or through tarot or, or stuff like that, through your own ration, Uranus, where this is going for the future. If we are flesh and blood robots, because basically that is the truth, what kind of future awaits us? And Neptune, it is an absolutely supremely harmonious energy, but Neptune is also the illusion. This is when Neptune, you know takes off the mystical mask and just allows you to look at what it truly is. Is that a blessing? Well, all of us have to decide this personally. Of course, with Neptune, there is a lot of blessing in this as well. And sometimes this blessing is a little bit salty as well, if you know what I mean. I observe this, but how fortunate am I that the divine Neptune guided me in such a way where I am not a slave to my mobile phone. How fortunate am I that I was born in a day and age where there was only a landline and I had to knock on my best friend's door in order for me to contact them and, you know, do whatever. How fortunate was I that I didn't have tablets when I went to school and I had to actually read the book. I had to go to the libraries to research stuff, no Google available. So Neptune in the sign of Pisces, the past, the blessings of the past, the blessings of the past that are eternal. You cannot erase you going to the library. You are fortunate. You are extremely lucky for all eternity that you grew up that way. And last but not least, Collectively speaking, again, Uranus, earthquake, Uranus, volcanic eruption, sorry. Uranus, natural calamity, especially when it opposes a very strong energy in the sign of Scorpio. And Scorpio is really good at transform, uh, once again, the element of transformation. Trans an earthquake can transform the landscape. An earthquake, a tsunami, whatever can really transform and another thing very notorious about Scorpio, 
accidents. Maybe it's not necessarily an earthquake. Maybe it can be just an unfortunate accident. What this energy reminds me of is the um, Lebanon explosion where a deposit of some kind of chemical blew up and it truly shook the whole city to its core. That was a very, very Uranian expression. And even though this is taboo, as in we don't really speak about this we, because we shouldn't really, there will be some kind of element of death in this equation, however this new moon plays out, collectively speaking. Now from an individual perspective, this is where no matter how this manifests, we have a choice. Because, you know, even though this energy is not linked to the new moon directly, Mercury holds a trine with Jupiter, that is a really favorable energy. And even the new moon itself, the square to Saturn. Yes, Saturn is limitation, restrictions, our own blockages, our own most urgent necessities. And this suggests that whatever we want to change, whatever we want to transform, the prize that we were seeking and looking for, working for, sacrificing for, as I said at the beginning of this horoscope, that is the prize to finally overcome the difficulty, the challenge, the obstacle, the limitation, to finally somehow get where we want to or we need to be in life. But, you know... That is also the motivational force. That is exactly what I mean. That at the moment when we get what we want, the moment when we get what we need, we are grateful, don't get me wrong, but we will definitely also know the sacrifice and it, it is the sacrifice. It is the journey to get where we need it to be, where we want, whatever. It is that journey that truly makes it bittersweet and bittersweet is like a main theme of 2021 saturn in the sign of aquarius aquarius is the only sign which is dual in such a sense that it can be a total paradox to itself like if we look at other dual signs gemini the most notorious pisces libra they still, the duality still has something in common. There is a bridge, there is a correlation, there is something there to tie the duality with Aquarius. No, the, it can be a contradiction to itself and exist in that way at the same time. But that also means that there is a choice with other dual signs. The choice is exactly where we want to take that balance, if you know what I mean. But with Aquarius, we can actually embrace one of the two. We don't necessarily have to embrace both. We embrace one and then we push the other one to the bottom, if that makes sense. So it's bittersweet, but we can say that for me, it's the sweetness that counts the most. And the bitterness, well, of course it's a life lesson, but I'll push it down. I won't let it uh, ruin my experience. But for people who might be a little bit more unwise or dramatic or like the bitterness, of course they will focus on that. This new moon, personally speaking, will demonstrate to us in the most literal possible sense. This is where it's not sci-fi, it's not spiritual philosophy, it will become literal that reality is what we choose. What we choose is exactly what we are going to get. But enough of the not the bitterness of it all. Let's focus a bit on the sweetness. Because there is a lot of potential in the scorpionic energy. The opposition to Uranus, well, it means chaos. Chaos can be constructive. Chaos can sometimes manifest as a jackpot, for example. Scorpio and Taurus are financial energies. Those who dare to risk, those who apply their rationality and diligence and just a tiny hit of, of faith, of courage, of dreaminess, believing strongly in their dreams, 
that might be the right combination for a jackpot. And what this says to me is cryptocurrency. Maybe if you invested into the right kind of cryptocurrency, you might harvest the fruits of your labor because, you know, whenever Uranus opposes another power player, and in this case, the sun and the moon, it wants to deconstruct, it wants to shake up the classic, the norm, the fixation of, of Scorpio, if that makes sense. So we might see in the world that the traditional is not doing so well. So a massive fall of stock market, of maybe problems with banks, with the world economy, that which is traditional, like cash-based, or that which is almost guaranteed to be a value for all eternity, like gold and stuff like that. Uranus likes to shake that up. So that which is usual, that which is traditional might see a big decline. But that which is revolutionary, that which is modern might see a huge spike. So this might be a really good jackpot moment for those who invested in cryptocurrencies. And another element to this, Venus at the time of this new moon is exactly conjunct Ixion. Ixion is a not so pleasant energy. It is a dwarf planet. It is further away from the sun than Pluto, so that means intensity. And its lower expression is lawlessness, profound immorality, almost that of criminal nature. Hence why the big theme that corruption is going to be exposed. But its favorable expression is when there is a strong will, when you truly obsess, but in the best sense, not in the unhealthy sense, even the gods have to submit to you. And when Venus conjuncts Ixion, Venus is currency. Which means, you know, when there is a big turmoil in the world out there for some people, that turmoil, that chaos, the loss, the, let's say, doom and gloom financially speaking, because Venus is currency once again, might be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity because where there is loss, there also has to be gain for a lucky few, let's say, and nature supports this always. You know, something dies, a big tree falls and dies and rots. That is a prosperity for the beetles, for the soil, etc. Or, no, no, a big animal, an elephant, dies. That is all you can eat buffet for a long time for vultures and scavengers and every other um, corpse eating creature. So this new moon has, let's just say, intense, profoundly intense as it may get, for those people who have a very sophisticated scorpionic energy in their charts, and this doesn't necessarily mean to have a lot of planets in Scorpio, if you have a lot of planets or some kind of sophisticated astrological energy in your 8th house, that also does the job. It may be exactly a big feast, if you know what I mean. For everyone who's into psychology, spirituality, alchemy, everyone who has a very strong goal and desire, with Mars also being in this part of the sky, strongly activating it, well, this can be like a series of opportunities to immerse into what you desire. If you're a spiritualist, well, you can imagine magic, paranormal activities, manifestations, connections, of course, transmute this, this and this, and you get a big prize. For psychologists, those who are into psychology, when traumas, pain, memories, nostalgias are close to the surface, well, then is the moment when you can work with them the most. Let's say if you're like a therapist or coach, counselor, whatever, and you have that very difficult uh, client, this might be your opportunity to truly help them, to, let's say, symbolically, of course, deliver that big blow to the trauma and elevate the person, inspire the person, 
almost hypnotize the person to heal, to regenerate, trigger their inner phoenix. If you're an artist, well, this is like soul food. Tap into it, create, do whatever. The more morbid, the more unusual, the more, you know, wildly artistic, the better. Because jackpot, after all, Scorpio money. Of course, this is also a really potent energy from a sexual sense. Because Mars and Scorpio, Mars is the male principle, the seeker, the, you know, dominator, getting the conqueror. Scorpio attractions and new moon, you know, something new has to be birthed out of this, like a new attraction or something you never experienced before, something shocking, something awakening, Uranus. It may come out of nowhere like a total shock and surprise. That which you seek also seeks you, for example. And the square to Saturn, if you're in a committed relationship... You have to say no. You have to do what is right or else. And the or else is it's not going to be a secret for long because whatever happens under this sky, it's going to come to the surface. It's going to be revealed very quickly, if not instantly, spontaneously. If you want to keep secrets and do things in the shadows, this new moon and this All of this, basically, November is not the best period. But if you don't have secrets, if you you have nothing to fear, then just go with the flow. Jupiter is trining Mercury after all. Who knows where a certain kind of attraction, regardless of which nature it is, can lead you. Where your curiosity can lead you. Sometimes it does lead you into dangerous waters, but the Square with Saturn, use your diligence, use your uh, a sense of logic, basically, Saturn in Aquarius. If you know that it's very dangerous, don't go. But if it's just a tiny bit of danger and it's adventurous, and this is, if it's the kind of situation where, you know, ultimately in life you have to experiment in order to see what it feels like for you, have the courage and do it. Especially if you have nothing to hide, nothing to lose, If it doesn't put you in danger of any kind in any way, shape or form. And ultimately, another expression of this energy, as I said, how did pain, how did suffering, how did losses, how did hardships and difficulties, how did profound loneliness, how did abandonment, how did sorrow and disappointment turn us, transform us, mutate us into the person who we are today? Did we give the most elevated and, let's say, sanctified expression to all of what we have lived, especially the dark side of things? Or is that work still in progress for us? Have we truly processed The fact that life is never ever going to be the same again, what it was before 2020? Or are we just tricking ourselves into accepting that? Because if we genuinely accepted that, we we will find ourselves basically having totally different kind of desires than we had before. Like, for example, if you had the desire to be, let's say, a renowned professional, a renowned person for something that you're skilled or learned of doing before that, and that desire of yours looks the same way right now, well then, this Scorpionic new moon will kind of reveal that you need to go back to the drawing board and just dream up another expression of that. But if your dream looks totally different, yet it has the same essence, then you have done the job. Then you can truly embrace the flow. Then you can truly embrace your journey and allow it unapologetically 
to guide you where it is that you need to go in life. And once again, I strongly believe that this energy is of that specific that when the moment comes when we get what we desired, we get what we worked for, we earned something massive. Regardless of what that is, something inner, something outer, a relationship, a love, respect, dignity, admiration, money, job, whatever. And we are confronted in that moment when we have to accept it, when we have to make it up, when we have to own it. This is where don't be shy. Don't feel any kind of guilt or regret. Don't hold the pain that and sacrifice that you had to endure against the world because they didn't it didn't give it to you when you needed it the most because that is basically the essence of divine timing you get it when your heart is light as a feather so have no remorse have no anger accept it just don't ask any questions accept it and celebrate your own way as sorrowful as, as that may even feel, but it's yours. It's only sorrow if you let it go. If you earned it, take it, accept it with dignity and pride. What May that be something magical, alchemical, inner, outer, whatever desire you worked for. If it comes soon, and chances are it does Uranus, instant, spontaneous, Mars, very quick, and very powerful in Scorpio, accept it for what it is, accept it how it comes in the shape and form that in, in which it comes, just don't ask questions, don't go look into the details because Virgo season is long over, just accept it and use it, integrate it, embrace it. And last but not least, don't fear. Don't let fear rule your life. Don't let anyone or anything scare you. You know, this is where it's okay to fear st stuff, you know, because fear is a natural uh, instinct, basically. But make sure that that fear is actually your own and not fear that the TV, the internet, your mobile phone, your friends insert into you. At least make sure that the fear is your own so you can own it and face it. If you suck up other people or anyone's fear like a sponge, well, you can imagine that that will destroy many things in your life. So do not fear. Don't let fear rule your existence. No matter what happens, either on the world stage or in your personal life, fight or flight Triggered by fear is still better than fear paralyzing you, if you know what I mean. So thank you so much for listening. I do hope that this helped you and you find this useful. And again, I'm so sorry that this wasn't the most optimistic horoscope ever, but the truth is the truth. The stars are not definitely not saying doom and gloom is coming and there is nothing you can do. The stars are saying simply, be brave because you can do this. You can go through this. Be yourself and be brave. And of course, choose your reality. Always choose your reality. The only way you are not a slave is if you choose your reality. And if anything, that is why you have your intellectual sphere. That is why your consciousness is expanding so you can do that so you can choose make the choice a fool a blind cannot make the choice but you can so as long as you have your mind at least and your mind is processing as in showing you the two different versions you're already saved you're already in the good boat if that makes sense so use this and let this empower you, that you do have a choice. Now, of course, if you enjoyed this and you found it useful and would like to support me and help my channel stay in existence, you can donate in the PayPal link in the description below. So with this being said, I wish everyone a blessed 
Halloween slash Day of the Dead have a truly magical and amazing celebration. Let your ancestors embrace you and bless you in all ways possible because you really need it now. All of us do. And like with every new moon, plant that seed of intention. Plant it and trust it. Thank you again. Until next time, bye for now.